Okay, what is up, guys? Here is another episode coming out for you from Hanson Athletics Radio. So on this episode, we interviewed and talked with a good friend, Justin Zinzumbo, which I don't even know if I say his last name right, so I apologize, Justin. But I've known Justin for, you know, the last six to eight years range-wise. Um, went to college at Utah State with him and was involved kind of under the same beginning mentor, which there's a really funny story as we get into it about how similar our experiences were. So we kind of talk about how we met and the development of our careers and kind of where we're both at now. Um, Justin does some really awesome stuff in terms of holistic mental and physical health and combining the two to help others. So go ahead, tune in, listen up. Became more important than like training. Like, so I yeah. would, I'd go to bed early, earlier. I'd like drink less, you know? So that's kind of, I don't know. That's, yeah. Yeah. Cause like, as you, that, that's kind of the same for me too. You just, you can balance both for a minute, but once you start to get more serious into one or the other, yeah. the other suffers. I remember, uh, in Logan, it's not. It's kind of funny coming full circle. But they used to do triple nickel wings on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So me and all my fraternity brothers would go and have like fifteen chicken wings and like five beers. And I would go to Cash Valley Strength and Conditioning after that, like beer on my breath, like yeah, belly full of chicken wings, and telling Brad and Jamie that they're like, I remember Brad being like, "Dude, at least you're here." Like. Um, in my heyday, there's no way at like, like it's, it's cool that you're here. You're like doing both of that, you know, it's yeah. obviously not good that like yeah. you're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Cause yeah, Brad's probably like, yeah, there's no way Yeah, he's right though. Like for me too, that's pretty impressive. Cause if I, if I did that before. Yeah. I remember getting like, <laughs> I never really got pukey just cause I didn't want to get go that hard but i just remember being like really uncomfortable after like and just burping up chicken wings yeah so yeah it's uh it's just interesting um for a little bit i was doing both but when i started coaching i remember thinking well shit now like i don't just get to walk the walk or like talk the talk if i'm gonna talk the talk i gotta walk the walk yeah kind of so that's when i started looking into my habits and just recently like looking like dialing in my nutrition uh, but I think that just comes with age. Yeah, that's for, good. And that's a good, though, because a lot of coaches don't even think about that, right? They just, like, want to tell you what to do or yeah. tell their clients what to do. I think and, it's just yeah. the culture that Brad created. Like, I wasn't going to say one thing and not do that same thing. Yeah. You know? And me, I held high regards for coaches my whole life from – my first soccer coach to my junior high basketball and football coach to probably Brad would be the next impactful coach in my yeah. life. So it was always when he asked me to coach, I was like, I, my that was a big deal. My response was, what do you mean? Like football, basketball? What do you mean coach? And he looked at me like, no, CrossFit. <laughs> and I, I seriously like authentically didn't know. What yeah. He, and I was like, just blown away. Like I, yeah, I've thought about it, but I didn't think that it would actually happen. Yeah. And I, and that's just kind of off tangent, but going off that is, um, I, cause I coached high school football like last year and the year before that in Logan and then in Pocatello. And I never ran into it, but some of the other coaches that were less than to me, the players, it was, I, I couldn't believe how like disrespectful the players are to coaches mm-hmm. now. And I don't know if it's because the coaching's worse or. Yeah. The kids kid. just have a different idea of, of what power or what authority is. But I, I was the same way growing up. Like, I would never back talk my coaches. Like, I never even questioned what they yeah. said. I was but, a little different in high school. I was kind of a little shit. I thought I knew everything. Yeah. My, and, but the thing is, I don't know. I hope my high school <laughs> football coaches don't hear this. But I don't know if they were, like, they didn't take it that serious. Yeah. Like, my junior high football and basketball coach it was his life man so like they he earned my respect so when i went to high school i had very high expectations for my yeah. coaches and when i saw little things like maybe they didn't know what they're talking about or they didn't like show up when they were supposed to or they just kind of went through the motions it was like like in my head at that time I'm like i know more than this dude like, yeah 
throw me the ball. You yeah. know, like, <laughs> but I think it's just like a perfect combination of me being a ignorant little kid, little jackass, and not maybe getting the the support that I could have maybe gotten yeah. from like a really serious program or coach. Yeah. Well, that's interesting too because that I, I – I wouldn't say like I, my coaches in high school knew what they're doing, but we even had like a tighter regimen, like in fifth grade through eighth grade. Yeah, dude. And I, was it, at yeah. The, I was at my junior high. I want to say like six thirty a.m. doing plyometrics. Like he was on, a, he was run us on a clock, like Tabata style. Like he was ahead of his time, dude. Yeah, we were on the clock in like squatting, pulling. Like I mean, he was. I don't know how closely if he like followed functional fitness, but he was like doing quote unquote cross it before. The was even, thing, yeah. The, 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 the poor thing is he didn't like teach us the best form. He yeah. It was just all about intensity. Yeah. Which that's a whole nother rabbit hole. But yeah, I mean, he taught me how to work hard for sure and how to get uncomfortable. Yeah. It's always interesting when you look back now and you're like, there were some people switched on before. We even knew what was yeah, going on. When I think back, he had like in the basement of our junior high, there was like this caged area, like black cage. You'd open it <laughs> and it was like rubber floor, yeah. like like platforms, maybe not like ollie lifting platforms, but I remember platforms where you'd like dead and squat. He had us like doing box squats. I mean, and he was always, he was either coaching or in his office. Like every time you'd open the door, he was watching some video or reading some book or like he just was he's down the rabbit hole man just craft. learning yeah, yeah. Huh. So was he I, like a pretty jack dude or was he just no he was a pretty good athlete he okay. would play but he would play basketball against us and just had a good jumper but i mean i, I bet he was in his 40s or 50s like he was he was a little older yeah um but just super intense like he probably i don't know what his life path looked like but if he, I like, I think if he would have gone into like the military, he probably would have been a SEAL or something like just really intense. that kind of mindset. Yeah. And just everything he did, he was like trying to improve himself or his athletes. See, that's badass. Although it does set you up for when you go to, yeah, you go to a high school program and people don't really give a shit. I was like, you can what? sniff it out. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted him to come. Like, I was like, why isn't he the high school coach? Yeah. Like he's been around, he's been at the junior high forever. He just rubbed people the wrong way. Cause he would get in your face, yell like he was intense. Yeah. So a lot of like the community didn't Doesn't respect like that. it because their some of their kids didn't respond to it well. Like, yeah. I remember him grabbing people like athletes' heads, yelling at them at halftime, and like just out of not not like intentionally, but like as he would walk away, he'd like kind of jolt and yeah. like, hit their heads on the locker. Oh yeah. Some, so like, so yeah. And they, that's how he ended up getting fired from. He threw a ball at a kid in PE that the kid's parents were lawyers and just the wrong kid to like, yeah to like do that yeah so I we're actually still in contact a little bit like he'll like like I'll post stuff PRs or whatever and he'll like it yeah. or comment on it which is cool it'd be interesting to see what his background or where he came from like in terms of training or where he learned that or whatever yeah I don't know that would be really interesting I think he grew up on a farm um that type area so it's like there's, that's where his work ethic came from for sure. And that's kind of what uh, that kind of brings you thinking of Brad now again is not, not that style, but he was switched on before like most people. Mm-hmm. Cause he like was in California. I don't know the exact story, but he's like with working with Kelly Starrett or I something. He so, like worked yeah. out at his outside gym that he had his little uh, like, like tent uh, thing. Yeah. It was yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> I can't even remember the name. Like a, like almost like a, uh, mobile storage. Yeah, like a mobile storage unit. Right? They just pull everything out. Cup, that, yeah. I think that's CrossFit San Francisco. Yeah. And it's still Starrett's yeah. gym. But. And then he just comes back to Logan, Utah, and then starts in the rec center or whatever and has like five people or whatnot. That's and nice. then it just spreads. Then he opens up the first gym, and then now there's like five gyms here, all kind of seeding from his yeah, gym, his really. influence for sure. So it's it always is, interesting. His influence is... He kind of alluded to it in his tenure, mm-hmm. um, kind of when he pointed out our table, me, you, and Dylan, were all like coaching at least as part of our careers. And so, it's yeah, like, I don't know. That would, it's it's interesting to think back to like what was he doing at that time that was so impactful on the three of us. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know because he like we were talking about this earlier, rapping about it earlier was 
Like, I feel like he influenced me a lot, but he never like, he wasn't like trying to influence me or he wasn't like, he was just like being authentic and being himself. And like, he was just a badass. So I was just like, dude, I got to be more like that guy. Yeah. And honestly, back then I, I dreamt of competing and I had a really unrealistic expectation for myself. Like, like I thought just a little bit of dedication and I'd be a regional athlete yeah. you know, or I'd be on his team <laughs> yeah. next year for regionals. But then the, his community lost a little bit of steam with the competitive side of CrossFit. And then it was, yeah, just kind of fizzled out for us. Yeah. But yeah, it's, I don't know. I, I can't put my thumb on it. I tell the story all the time. I took his USU accredited class. So I like signed, it was like a PE class through USU and you'd go to his gym for like a, just a credit class. I took that one fall Dragged one of my fraternity brothers with me. He's actually a coach right now at CrossFit New Life. So it's like he, I mean, there's another coach that stemmed from, from Brad. There. Yeah. I mean, not kind of from me from Brad, but still, um, I signed up for it the next spring. I remember just like trying to do my own thing, um, over the winter break, signed up for it the next semester after his little intro spiel, he would just like go over his gym rules and then be like, okay, show up Thursday with gym clothes and a water bottle. And I, I just, I hung around after and was like, dude, I need this more than twice a week. And I laugh about it because we're like buddies now, but he was just like really stern and like blunt with me. He's like, okay, so you can take this class, which is twice a week, or I offer a student membership. And at the time I was like 75 bucks. And I was like, dude, so, like. 75 bucks. <laughs> it's like, I either buy your membership or I eat. Like, yeah. So I couldn't like at the right then and there, I couldn't just commit. But how I tell the story is like, I honestly didn't even leave the parking lot. I was driving, but before I called him, cause he's like, just call me if you have any questions. I called him. I was like, I'll be there in the morning. And I was like, that's just kind of the yeah. end of the story. Really? It's like I joined his community a year or so later. I remember like riding my bike to his gym. He, he always thought that that was like, he just brought that up a couple of times. He's like, did you ride your bike here? You go hard, you ride back. Like, I guess he just like saw dedication from the get go. Yeah. But, that's it. That's interesting. Cause I've never like heard you really explain it that way, but it's so funny that, so my experience was I took that class and I only was in there like a week and then I tore my quadricep tendon at the gym. Oh shit. So I was injured. So, but I just stayed in the class and like would go and watch and listen and shit. Um, and as I like started to get better, was he coaching it? Yeah. He was coaching it. Cause Watcott coached mine. Yeah. He, he was so coaching it. I didn't it. even know Brad. Watcott put us through. So, oh, sorry. I, I'm interrupting You're good. You're good. you, but we'll come back. Watcott put us through hell. We did Oh, why can't I remember the name? Oh, Karen. We did 150 wall balls. We did Angie, like the hunter pull up, push up, sit up squat. Like yeah. he, he would just get us r- riled up at the end of class and have like four of us go 500 meter row for time. Like almost every class. Like, yeah. He just like put us. He was hell. nuts. But, Cause yeah, I yeah. didn't even know Brad. I, I took the class when he was at his old location. Okay. And then they trans some of the spring that I signed up. I ended up dropping it and just buying a membership was at his new location. So I don't even know if I'd met him. But anyway, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't even know you took that yeah, class. Yeah, so I, t- I took that class, and uh, he gave me, still gave me the credit and everything because I showed up and shit. So then I, but I ended up taking a couple more times. But I remember, so I, I talked to him too, and I was like, I actually approached him as like, I think I want to like coach, like learn how to coach or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he just like looked at me and he goes, all right, show up at 5 a.m. like on Monday, Wednesday. Like show up at 5 a.m. That's all I said. Yeah. So then for the next like three months, I would just go at 5 a.m., and just shadow him. So I would just follow him around. He didn't really even talk to me that much. I just like followed him around wow. and shit. And then, uh, after, after that period and during that time, as I was getting better, I was working out with walk out up at the school. Cause he's, yeah. there's like five of us. He's like running this, just smashing us, dude, just killing us, <laughs> but we didn't know any better, yeah. you know? And you could recover like yeah. a wizard. Yeah. Back then, dude. Yeah. So then I'm doing that. And then he's like, and then after the end of that, like three months, he's like, all right, you can teach one of these classes. So I started teaching the credit class. Yeah, that's how I started. And I didn't, and I didn't really know shit, but you know, I did. Anyway, I ended up doing, I ended up coaching that credit class for like three years, four years, but 
it was just interesting because it's kind of the same thing. He's like, gave me a challenge or he's like, you know, for you, it was like, all right, pay the fee and come join them, yeah. be a member. Yeah. Join and for me, it was like, all right, show up at five, you're in college, show up at 5 a.m. three times a week, yeah. which is like, I, at the time I was yeah. like, fuck. Yeah. So, huh. yeah, that's, so I have a kind of a funny story about that accredited class. When I first started coaching, it was like me shadowing him, which lasted for like a week maybe. And then it was, he'd show up and be at the desk and like, he'd have a workout written and he'd kind of give me some pointers. Then it kind of phased into a workout was written on the whiteboard, but he never showed up. Showed up. Yep. Then I, one day there was no workout written on the whiteboard. And I'm like, and you text him and say, what do I do? Freaking out, yeah. dude. I'm like, <laughs> this is the same exact thing that happened to me, dude. <laughs> I'm like, dude. What, what, uh, there's no workout. What am I supposed to do with these guys? He's like, I don't know. Come up with something. And I was like, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, dude. Dude. I didn't, I knew nothing. Like I didn't know push pull. I didn't know. Yeah. Like nothing. And yeah. I don't even know. I think, I think I probably threw together a bench. I like threw a benchmark up there because I was like, yeah, probably Googled CrossFit. Workout. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> no, that's funny because it's like the same exact. Thing. He must have just been methodical with yeah, it, dude. And I'm sure if we had Dylan here, he'd probably tell a similar story. That's funny, dude. But yeah, it was just like yeah, you, same thing. I thought it was more of him like, and this is a really, this isn't this doesn't reflect my opinion of him, but it was almost like. I thought it was an absent minded. Yeah, like he didn't care. Like he's just like, whatever, do it. Yeah, just do it. I don't care. Like it's just those USU classes. He'd always kind of bitch about the kids that didn't want to work hard. Like, yeah. But yeah, it was probably very intentional. Yeah. Like, to see what we would do. Yeah, I'm not going to ride a workout. He can, he's been there a year. He can come up with a workout. Yeah. Dude, that's funny. That's interesting. <laughs> I wish he was here right now. <laughs> um, I mean, but I'm not surprised that. That's what we're, I mean, we're in Logan. That's where we met each other, really. Yeah. And I kind of started a relationship. I'll never forget, and I use the cue all the time. You gave me a cue Saturday. We were like maxing our back squats, or I was going heavy. And you're like, dude, you can't back squat and sit at the bottom and then come up. And I, like, you know, I always thought it was like a two part movement. Like, like you down, sit and then drive. Up, yeah. Right. And you're like, you need to, like, and I, I don't know if you use this, but it's, this is how I use it now. It's like, it's like you're sitting on a thumbtack at the bottom and drive. Yeah. You gotta, hole. yeah. Like control, boom. Bounce. Yeah. Go. And like, yeah, I, I think I, I probably, I mean, at that time you're just on the trajectory every time you use max UPR, but that changed like the back squat for me. Yeah. So it's like, I've learned a lot from you and Dylan too. So yeah, it's, I mean, I'm not surprised we're talking Logan, talking Brad cause it's kind of where it all started for us. I know. Yeah. And I still, whenever people ask me like who my influences are or whatever, he's the first name that always pops up. Yeah. And that I use him as a example when someone comes into CrossFit New Life or someone talks to me about being scared of being hurt in CrossFit is I, I say, I'm like, first, my number one job in my opinion is to keep you safe. Yeah. Second is to have a fun, like have a good time. Like hope you, hopefully you enjoy it. Yeah. And in that process, you're going to like get fit. Yeah. It's going to happen. Goals and get strong. Um, but I, in that like spiel, I give people like, I come from a background where a coach like wouldn't let us jump down from a box. Like any athlete, we stepped down. Like yeah. You did singles on your deads because like, why, 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 why yeah. Yeah. Like I just, I, thanks to him like value the importance of moving right first yeah and then like learning how to add some load and yeah i mean i i like to push the intensity like that's what i mean that's what the crossfit style training is all about and i think i think a lot of gyms and coaches get well let me back up crossfit gets a bad name because gyms and coaches put intensity first and i'm just yeah i'm just lucky that Brad was the first experience I had and it was like, he just valued moving right first. Yeah. He, val yeah. Valued. He teaches movement and not just like movements. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's not just like, Oh, here's deadlift. Go fast. Yeah. Now go. Yeah. It's well, like, yeah, here's, here's right. how you should do it. Yeah. You're a little rounded, but it'll be fine. Yeah. No, that's, yeah. That's, and I wonder where he, I would love, that's how I'd love to have him on here is I'd love to hear about like, did he get that from Kelly or was he just like, 
that's just him. Like I can see that just being his personality. Yeah. But it's it's just interesting because I wonder who he would say like his influencers are. I would guess it's just a little bit of both. He seems a little conservative in nature. Yeah. Like just in what he does. And so that and I'm I would hope just like any coach or or person who has a craft that you just kind of develop your own. Yeah. Like you turn it into your own. To learn from someone, take what you like, and learn yeah. from someone else. It's like what it's all about. Yeah, for sure. And then uh, that that kind of stems us into like, and then that USU program kind of branches off right with Waka, and that's kind of like Brad's seed up there at Utah State. And then I think uh, we all just kind of got a shot to be like involved with that and like have some responsibility there. Yeah, and shit. I think at that time. You and Dill were were, de- were coaching more, training more. So it was twelve was my first open. Then I think so fourteen. There was a year that the fraternity, like I was president, and I just didn't have time. Yeah, and that was when you guys were like you and Dill were like running the show up at USC. I remember sh- showing up like twice a month, and Dylan would just be like, "Dude, where have you been?" <laughs> yeah. I'm like. I know I live across the street, literally, yeah. but I just, it's, it wasn't a priority at the time. Um, so yeah, I feel like I missed out. I mean, I don't regret anything. The days as at Sigma Chi were some of my like most fond memories and built some serious relationships that'll last forever with some of my best friends. Um, but I definitely know that if I <laughs> would have stayed more connected to you, Dylan, Walcott, and Brad, I, my coaching would be further and that's okay. Like I, I think I've, I've come a long way in the, in the last few years as a coach, but I just remember feeling like I bought these, uh, like baby blue innovates to like motivate me to go. Yeah. And I, that didn't help worth a shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the shoes didn't work. <laughs> yeah. No. Cause it was interesting. Cause like Dylan, like it was funny cause walkout was running it. And me and Dylan, and like everybody was just kind of working out there or whatever, and this small group, and then all of a sudden Walkout's just leaving. Like it's like, we I think we had like because he was got moved for military. I don't remember he got a job or something. I think but, he was going to school because yeah, there's now like a PT. Yeah, so he just like, but it was like a month notice. Like, hey, I'm out of here, Dylan. You're in charge. So then like Dylan or or whatever. I don't know if he picked Dylan at the time or if the school just kind of like Dylan had been there longer. So Dylan just takes over. And then so the and that that was an affiliate, right? Yeah, at the so time the it was aff- like a free CrossFit affiliate that they gave <laughs> the to the affiliate school. Affiliate was put in Dylan's name. Yeah. Cuz that's what kept Dylan out of competing at regionals one yeah. year. Yeah. Like that's a whole set. That whole story yeah. is like he's just so, such a good athlete and it just like every time the dominoes just Yeah. didn't didn't line up for him. Yeah injuries but i didn't know that the that affiliate story until not i mean it's probably been a couple of years but i'd known dylan for years yeah before that he was like yeah i was supposed to go on that team i was like what yeah crossfit wasn't happy because i my name was on the usu affiliate and i was competing under brad's affiliate i was like what i had no yeah. idea yeah but uh so yeah so basically dylan takes over or whatever and that's like a year, year and a half, two years, I don't remember. And I'm just coaching still there or whatever. We're just kind of like running the thing, taking turns programming, whatever. Because he never was like, he was always like sharing the responsibilities. He wasn't like, an, you know, some people are like, no, it's my program. Yeah. But, uh, and then all of a sudden Dylan's like a month before, just like a month before the semester, he's like, uh, he like graduated. He's like, oh, I bought a gym. He's like moving. He's like, oh yeah, I'm going down to Salt Lake or whatever. Like I have an opportunity to buy a gym. So then I'm like, I'm, I don't feel ready, but then it's like, oh shit, now it's going over to, to me. Yeah. So then I take over the, the program and I kind of put my spin on it, kind of change at the, the school, like decided, I don't remember what it is. I think CrossFit was like, you have, now you have to pay for it. I don't know. I don't remember. We ended up breaking yeah, off the affiliate. They probably wanted more money or. Yeah. Cause it was free at the time. Like when we were like the CrossFit affiliate. It's probably the same time Brad dropped his affiliate. Yeah. So I don't know if there was something to do with that, but so then I just, we changed the name to USU Strength and Conditioning, which I, I'm surprised they let us do that just because that's like what the athletics department calls theirs. But so we changed the name to that, and then I kind of take over, and I didn't know what the fuck I was doing or whatever. So I start doing a 
like this is where I kind of because I'm still pretty involved with like the CrossFit football guys that now they're like power athlete. Oh yeah, I, I just went. I just went to their uh, yeah. block, block one coach testing like two weeks ago, but uh, and they they were kind of the one that brought into CrossFit just like that linear progression, like the heavy lifting before the wad, because before okay, CrossFit dot yeah. com was just like mostly just like just kind the of the long, strength yeah. bias programming. Yeah, so well, that's where I got into that. So I started implementing that up at the school. Whatever, and that's kind of where I got like that's kind of like where my spin took me off of it. So I kind of ran it like that, but like the seeds, like just the people that were there, like Dylan and Travis, like it went for it was crazy because it went from five people to like when I left, it was like 150, 100, yeah, yeah, 150 people. So that thing was like a full fledged like program, man, yeah. like a gym, like a big ass gym, yeah, for sure. And I it, mean, yeah, I mean, especially in reference to the small town of Logan and the, I mean, there were college students. So yeah, but it's like, we don't, we don't even yet have a hundred members across at new life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's like, I, we're not rolling in the money, with yeah. it, but at, at the same time, like 150 members and the, I get that they're not paying like a full membership cause it was on camp, but yeah, it was like, it's no joke to try on in your end to try and manage, manage. That. Yeah. 150 people coming and going and not really knowing what the hell I was doing and, and all beginners. Too. Yeah. Well, all, well, most of them. Yeah. Beginners. Most of them. So that was, that was interesting, but it's, it's funny. Cause that's like that opportunity though. That's kind of what even started. Like my hands athletics only started because people were like asking me for programming after I left. Yeah. That's like, cool. that's the only reason like the online shit started happening. It was cause people were like, Hey, could you have workouts I can do? And like and Ange and Marin. And yeah, and those like, guys all came, like yeah, they were it's just crazy to look back and be like, Wow. I mean how how long has that been? So I graduated from USU in fourteen. Yeah, I graduated like the end of fifteen. Started so, yeah, sixteen. It was when you took when you took over USU, I had moved to Salt Lake to get my masters. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that next spring is when Dylan, or it was like that winter that Dylan came down mm-hmm. to buy out CrossFit New Life because it was his uncle's at yeah. the time. And it just, it's just crazy though that, I don't know, it just stems from Brad and then that starts up and then we all kind of get to like move through that and then go. What do you think is so powerful about and then look at um, now I'm asking you the questions. <laughs> no, I don't care. Yeah, no, this is. <laughs> what do you think is so powerful about the connection that's made in a gym? Like Ange, I, I haven't, I haven't like talked to her in years, you know. But it's just like like we both tried to train CrossFit together, and like I remember like flopping around trying to walk on our hands, like yeah. falling in Victus programming. It's like she's came. I mean, she's came a long way as, oh, a, all, yeah. as an ollie athlete, and it's like. You know, like training in her gym today, well, like I said, it was pretty nostalgic. It's cool to just, like, that. I don't know. I don't really get it. Like, I, it's, I guess it is kind of like a sport. Yeah. But, like, I'll see another story. Like, I ran into Chels Funk. Um, where were we? Up in Jackson uh, for one of my buddy's bachelor parties. Uh, her and her husband were just sitting at a booth and it was like, what? <laughs> and I like left all my buddies at the bachelor party and, and went, went over talked to yeah. these guys and had a couple drinks for like an hour and a half. I was like, these dudes are up to no good. Like, what are you guys doing? And we, <laughs> yeah. like Funk, Chels Funk and I trained for like maybe three months. Like, you know, like, yeah. but it's just like, there's a pretty powerful connection that happens in the walls in the, in of the these gym. kind of gyms, you know, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's like, well, most of the gyms I've been exposed to or been involved with, they're like, they're smaller communities. So I, I, I can't speak for like the bigger ones where you maybe like you have a huge box that's like 300 people and not everybody knows each other, but typically everybody like knows of each other. And then I think there's something that has to do with like, at some point, especially these people that we're connected with, we all sucked together. So we were like a we had a common interest, which was whatever br- people come in for a million different yeah, reasons, just bettering yourself, but we had a common interest in here testing yourself, and then we were vulnerable at the same time. So we were like, not great. That's what I think it is. And it's, it's like, like you, yeah, you just bond with people that vulnerable, like suffering. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, regardless of how good we were at whatever time we got vulnerable physically, mentally, emotionally, 
in a space, like doing the same shit. Yeah. It's almost like it's just tribal, like, dude. Yeah. It's just like you just, I don't know. That's just, you just bond with those people. And it's like a good example is like the two weeks ago, I went to the power athlete block one testing. And there's 21 people from all over the world. Like there's people from Europe, whatever. Um, and people from all over and they're all, most of them are like a similar background. They're all like, seem like tactical kind of hard ass dudes. But for some reason I just got along with everybody. And I think it's just because we had that common interest in like mm-hmm. that methodology. And then we were at this testing where we were vulnerable to like, yeah. cause we were getting tested on what we knew in front of them and shit like that. Yeah. And like, I'm, I'm already like best friends with the five dudes that I like roomed with there, you know? So, so I don't know. Yeah, I think it's you just kind of inherently have similar values. Like yeah. Even, even though you may live different lives and like whatever that looks like, but you have similar values of, of health and wellness and, you know, like human performance and all Mm -hmm. of the, like, right. Even if you don't speak the same language, it's like, okay, yeah. Yeah. This dude, this dude and I can connect on that level. Yeah. Right. I don't know. No, that's for sure. And, and like you said, there's a full spectrum, spectrum of different people, but they all like had the nuts to walk in here and like, you know, it's kind of just like you got to respect everybody that's in there because they're taking time out of their day. And this isn't like these kind of gyms and these kind of settings aren't like the most comfortable. Mm-hmm. Like if you're somebody that's like kind of, we- I don't know, nothing to knock on, but like if you're the person that would rather go to Planet Fitness, you're probably going to like not get along as well with yeah. the people that are coming here. Yeah. Like it's just like a different mentality. For sure. Yeah. Even if there's like, like you said, me and Andrew are completely different like as athletes yeah. or, and our mentality and everything, but there's some kind of common connection that yeah. we were able to create. It's just, just like a here. general respect. Yeah. For, cause just knowing what the kind of dedication and work that, that it takes to, yeah. to even just train like this, even just to show up every day, Yeah, you know, willingly to suffer. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, whatever that suffer looks like, but yeah, that's a, like for me and us at this point, you really like, this is like where I feel most comfortable, right? Like this is, this is like where I'm at in my flow is a place like this. So I, I'm sure you run into it up in Pocatello, but like, what do you, like, what, what does that look like to have, to get people past that barrier in the door? Like that's my, that's as, like my overarching question and like I feel like that's a battle I fight mostly outside the doors of the gym mm-hmm. of like people CrossFit's dangerous like what squatting below pit like still those like yeah ingrained yeah people are just scared and and yeah I think it's a like level of confidence and comfortability I mean I've been inside the walls of a gyms like this for almost seven years now maybe well I guess it's past seven years but so it's like second nature to me i'm like what are you scared of yeah just come in what yeah Yeah, i don't know i don't know what it is because you even saw that yeah but back in pocatello it's kind of like i think there's two ways to do it and some people refuse to do one or the other or neglect one or the other but i think the two ways is one if you want to do it you kind of have to butter it up and make it look sexy and dumb it down and like in your marketing and the way you explain it yeah, and not really be completely honest about everything you're doing until you get them in here. Yeah. And then number two is, See, I, I don't love that because to my fault, I'm too honest. Yeah. I'm yeah. So authentic. some people don't want to do that yeah. and that's how people get people in the gym. Yeah. Like some people use that tactic nonstop. I think the way that I've done mostly in Pocatello, just because I've, the way I run my physical locations, like one-on-ones in very small groups. Mm-hmm. So it's, I only have two or three athletes there at a time and I only have 10 members and I just, I, my prices just reflect like the exclusivity, mm-hmm. but, um, I've really, really focused on, which is harder with more members, but like t- communicating with my members and being like, Hey, like, how am I doing for you? Um, what could I do better? T- I'll take them to coffee and be like, what do you like? What are the top five things you like right now mm-hmm. about your training, about what we're doing? And what I've seen is like basically all my people that I have right now come through word of mouth referrals. So I got one client and I kind of did this stuff and, and she's like telling everyone. Yep. Yeah. So it kind of just, depend- like yeah. 99.9% of CrossFit new lives marketing 
like we like there's been no plan and you can call it marketing because it's just inherent word of mouth. Yeah. But like the like trajectory of that gym, uh, ha, like has just been going up since day one. And so it's like, yeah, you focus on the members and it's word of mouth. They bring their cousin, mom, coworker, yeah. in. and that's like, that's like what, like we, that's the value that we hold. Yeah. It's like, we want to create a family like, okay, we're not going to turn down 300 members. Yeah. You know, like that would be great. We're also more interested in like a really tight knit home away from home yeah. style thing. So what, what would you say to the person that says they don't need this style of training in their life? Uh, do you think, do you, well, do you think that everyone needs something like this? I, th- I think that every human being needs to be training in the gym that so for transfer outside the gym because yeah. 99% of the people, even your really good athletes really are not going to be a com- like successful competitive athlete. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, you yeah, can I'm like talk- tease them with that shit, but you could, but like everybody that comes in here, like we were talking about this earlier, like my goal is to teach them how to move in a way that will carry outside the gym and maybe make them, you know, less injury prone, but also just f- move and feel better because most people I work with, like, say I can't squat because my knees hurt. I can't press above my head because my shoulders hurt. And in six months they're doing those things and, and there's the empowerment that comes from that. And then they're like, oh yeah, I've been going on way more hikes. Like I've ridden my bike now. Like it's just kind of like a domino effect. And I think if you just, you don't get that if you just go to like a typical globo gym and you're by yourself, you don't have community, you don't have somebody pushing you or you're just sitting on machines that don't really like resemble exactly what you do outside the gym while there might be a place for machines like in balancing out or injuries, like, yeah. you know, you can use those to a benefit, but I think you need to move. I think everybody needs to move the way in the gym they do outside the gym. Cause we're basically just replacing like with modern age. Now we don't have to do the shit that we used to have to do like hunting and yeah. walking and hiking. So we need to move in here the way we would be, mm. you know, we should, yeah. The way our ancestors did. Yeah. Yeah. When you try to like resemble that or whatnot. So yeah, what I hear is you, is you saying that person needs to identify what they value outside of the gym. Yeah. And hopefully that's something more than video games and social media. Right now it is, but I'm right, scared for like, 10 years down the road. Yeah, you know like, what I'm saying? Cause if that's all they value is fast food and then you can't get them world really. of warcraft you can't tr- you yeah, can't convince them then, they don't care yeah, well how can it make me yeah it's like oh okay like um you'll be able to sit up straighter in your yeah ga- you'll be able, gaming to, you'll be able chair. to play longer yeah, <laughs> yeah i don't know you'll have more energy to do that like if you yeah. train so i guess you could rip it back that way but that's interesting i'm take because we did the we talked about that at this um block one testing and it it kind of came down to like when we had like a coach's round table which was awesome, like sitting down with 21 people from all over the world that most of them are like either in charge of gyms or own gyms um, and actually just get a talk because it's hard to get people to do that. Even in my Pocatello, like people kind of have dislikes for each other or whatever. But we just sit there and we were talking about it and it's just like to convince somebody, you just really have to get down to their goal. Mm-hmm. Like you got to figure out for that person like what they're, what's important to them and almost always you can take that goal and resell it back to them with the way we teach movement and the way we you do functional movement. Like there's almost always a way to tie it in. And like with the work that I do with um, like at risk populations. And I think that's just a good way to to generalize social work. Um, A lot of times that goal, that like spark, it boils down to, okay, Darren, what got you out of bed today? Yeah. Like, right. Cause they, that they get in pretty dark places where yeah, they don't, they don't have like aspirations to go to school or start a business or, you know, it's, so it's like they get pretty stuck, but sure. Shit. They got out of bed. They got out of bed. So why did you get out of here? Yeah. Like they're sitting in front of me. They're out of program. They're luckily. And like what I'm able to do is they're at a gym, mm-hmm. you know, they might be like reluctant to be there, but no one dragged them by their hair. Yeah. Sometimes pretty close, but it's like, so that's, that's kind of what, what that motivation boils down to. It's like, okay, what got you out of bed today? And that, that can be like a tough question for some people to answer. Um, but I think, I think someone has 
everyone has an answer and what you're saying, I, I agree that it could, that reason could benefit from functional training. Yeah. No matter what it is, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like I want to be able to do the laundry. I want to be able to play with my kid. I want to be able to what dude, anything like it doesn't matter. I had a really powerful interaction with this gal. I went and booked a tattoo appointment and she's the mom of the owner of the shop. She like works the front desk a couple of days a week. I just assumed the way she was talking that she was like retired, but she does something, you know? And we just got to talking and told her I was a social worker. I worked with those recovering from substance use disorder and she kind of got teary eyed. I don't know what her story is, but just like thanked me for the work. And then I explained that I'm like involved in a gym and I take my clients to the gym and like my real passion is to help people like be moving. And anyway, it just like she, her motivation if if i could like have to answer that question for her is her granddaughters her granddaughters are playing volleyball and she wants to make it to their wedding but she's had like all sorts of health problems and i i left her my card and she said she's going to reach out and if she does great but it's like she needs to be able to get up if she falls down yeah you like so it's like that and yeah and that's i mean soapbox and the drinking the CrossFit Kool-Aid, like that's where Glossman's going with all this stuff. Yeah. Is like helping those people. Like he's more focused on that. Yeah. He's, he's less interested in making Matt Frazier fitter. Yeah. Like that's great. Like this style, like and he, Matt Frazier doesn't do CrossFit. Like, right. He does. He trains a, a, as a professional athlete. Yeah. CrossFit is an hour a day. Yeah. Like CrossFit is, is sit ups and double unders and then you go home. Yeah. Right. So it's like, he's the best at CrossFit, but he doesn't train CrossFit. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, it's just, it's powerful. Cause yeah, it's like, she, and she got it. I was like, I, I was like, I'm, I'm confident I could help you. You know, it's like, I offer a free assessment, you know, we'll sit down we'll talk about your goals, see what you can do, what you can't do and get you to your goals. But that, yeah. that's really, that's kind of where I love what, what CrossFit headquarters is doing now because that's that's what intrigues me and you and I talked about that earlier is like the the athletes the competitors are great and that's super fun um but to be able to help like I've got a couple that comes to CrossFit New Life 5 a.m Monday Wednesday Friday and they just took like scuba diving lessons I'm gonna say they're in their 60s if they're if they're younger than that, I might I'm gonna feel bad. But <laughs> um, uh, I was talking to the husband because I've met like the wife's been traveling and she's kind of been a little more absent. It's just asking him how her wife's doing, and he's like, you know what? It's she's good and this and that. And he just shared an experience where they had to carry their 70 pound scuba tanks like to the water, like like get in their scuba gear, put the tank on their back carry it like get down and, and and her his wife was just blown away that she was like able to do that without anyone anyone helping, helping her. her yeah and so it's just like it's enhancing their quality of life and that's a shit that like gives me chills and yeah and really motivates me to like get out there and, and do that help people yeah yeah and it's empowering too right because then she's like shit i can i can carry a 70 pound tank like where does that now where does that kind of motive where does that confidence start to show up in other places mm-hmm. in people's life yeah he he also get he also provided an example and i can't remember exactly but it was some somewhere along the lines it's like she noticed someone struggling to carry something like groceries out of and and she went over there and like carried the groceries walked up the steps and again she's in her 60s like yeah like she shouldn't be the one doing that she yeah be the, dickhead high school kid yeah. that's, that's you yeah. know like that doesn't even notice someone struggling yeah. but like she just felt really like the word you used empowered that she was able to do that yeah and and yeah and, and then i'm sure you see it even more intensely than i do but it just seems like people that move frequently and use their body and like unlock new capability or just and you know really understand the benefit of moving and enjoy it like they just are happier mm-hmm like, cause they, I don't know, man, it's just like, you get somebody that's really in the rut and you just, you get them moving, you get them sweating. They start to see that they can do things. 
or they get to feel that challenge and get that that endorphin rush when they're successful, yeah. you know, or at least try. That's the that's the beauty of um what's the word? Why can't I think of like trajectory like you, progression? Yeah, or, like uh you use it when you're talking about USU and your style program. Like linear progression? Yeah. yeah. That's like the beauty of that with like a young athlete like new to training and the populations that I've worked with in the last year is yeah the neck like we go five by five back squats for six weeks and each week they're going to get their five is going to get heavier yeah and so it's like immediate feedback like they're not getting immediate feedback because they're day more sober yeah right like nothing's really changing they don't yeah they don't yeah like i'll never forget um at one of the gyms we were training this population at they had like ropes hanging in the middle like to climb and the clients were jokingly like, when are we going to use these? And I was like, we'll climb ropes after, after we train. And they're like, really? And I was like, yeah. I was like, I guarantee a couple of you will get to the top once I teach you the technique. And one of these guys, who's, he's had a lot of struggles in his life, he climbed to the top of the ceiling and got down, and he was just glowing. Yeah. Dude. Like, and he still, I've seen him on and off. That was about like six months ago. He still brings up that example. It made an impact on me, like to yeah. share it today. Like, imagine what it did for him. You know? Yeah, and, and in his deepest, darkest moments or whatever, he yeah. can be like, "Shit, if I climb that rope, though." You yeah. know, that's like something that's bright. He's like, "I never thought I'd be able to do something like that." And yeah. I was like, "Dude, that's awesome. it's just the beginning, bro." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, let's get you legless Elsa. Yeah, thing, I know, dude. right? <laughs> no, yeah, so it's cool. It's all, it's all interesting how it ties together. Like we'll have, you have all these different professions of people that sometimes argue or butt heads or whatever. And it's just like, dude, you're all working towards the same shit. Mm -hmm. Like if you just figure out how to put it all together. Yeah. I mean, and really it's just like living a life that you're more happy about. Yeah. And what, whatever, I'm not here to, I can't define that for you. Mm -hmm. Like, right. Unfortunately, I don't know, the societal changes are like to increase their score on some video game or something. But I think when it boils down to it, it's kids, it's relationships, it's opportunity mm -hmm. and being physically capable is going to provide those for you. Better, I guess, better opportunities, more opportunities, but. It's been cool, man. I, I got. We got to wrap it All up. Right, we'll, have to, we'll have to. Well, we can just yeah. call it there. But we'll have to do another one. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe a little challenge for those. If the, if if this gets pu published or oh, yeah, we'll put it up. We'll put it up. It's like those in Pocatello. Like reach out to Darren. You know, like yeah. don't. It is scary. I get that. It's scary. And everyone that walks into a CrossFit gym for the first time, like you guys are badass. Like it. it so I get that it's scary. But if you believe in like what we were talking about, that it can help change your life, like give it a chance. And the other like disclaimer I threw out there is like, find something that works for you. It doesn't have to be CrossFit. It doesn't have to be Hanson Athletics. Like, yeah, it can be something like, but move. Yeah. And, and I'm confident that Darren or myself can like help you find that. So I don't know. This has been fun. That's dude. good, man. Yeah. So where can people like find you like on Instagram or um, yeah, website so or what? Instagram is just underscore Zumbo, uh, Z U M B O. And then Justin at CrossFit new life.com. If they specific, okay. if they're like in the Salt Lake area, I do personal training, uh, work with kids, adults, elderly. Um, and yeah, we offer group classes. Uh, yeah, those would be the, the yeah. quickest ways. And then my challenge would be, cause I, I have listeners that are in Salt Lake, but also the, everyone kind of across the board, like, I know it's sometimes it's hard for people to like talk about not like how the mentally they're doing and stuff, but just the challenge is like, if you kind of want to tie that into your fitness or talk to someone that's like trained to talk to you mm -hmm. and someone that's like holistic about their approach, like reach out to Justin or, um, kind of check out, like you said, go to his Instagram. You don't have to like necessarily say you're struggling or whatever, but just reach out and be like, Hey, you know, what do you think about this or what can I do to improve one thing? You know? Yeah, for sure. I, I just kind of clarify, I can directly help that. Like I'm a licensed therapist. Yeah. Um, and, and or indirectly, you know, like teach you how to move right. And 
And in my opinion, innately, like you'll start feeling better about yourself. Yeah. Like your the depression will be lessened. The anxiety will be relieved, you know? And so, yeah. Like that, I, I, uh, see the benefits of traditional therapeutic practices. I just also know that moving and I can help with both will also help. Yeah. So S- sweet, man. Cool. Thanks, man. That's All right. Fun. Yeah. Okay, thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope you enjoyed the episode. We'd love any feedback you'd love to give us. Um, Consider giving us a review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you kind of listen to this podcast at. If you are interested in working with myself and my team when it comes to health and nutrition, we offer online coaching and remote programming, nutrition help, as well as a large plethora of other services to help those that want to work with a coach. If that interests you at all, head over to handsathletics.com and, you know, reach out to us. We can answer any questions you have. You can take our 10 second quiz. That'll give us a good direction on where you need to go with your training to reach your goals. Again, thank you for supporting Hands Athletics and I appreciate you listening to the episode.